Hello everyone and welcome to my first baking video where I'm gonna be baking some spices and cocoa cookies that is a recipe that I found from a book that was gifted to me for Christmas so for the ingredients you're going to need uh, 250 grams of plain flour half a bag of uh, uh, sweet yeast yeast that is for sweet two spoons of cocoa 80 grams of butter 100 grams of sugar although i would recommend having like 150 because these these cookies are pretty non-sweet since you're going to also add uh two tablespoons two teaspoons oh sorry <laughs> two teaspoons of cinnamon and two teaspoons of nutmeg you're also going to need two eggs and some powdered sugar you're, go you're going to start by sifting the flour into a bowl with the cocoa and the yeast I, do you call it yeast in English? that is a really good question I have no idea, I always call it yeast whether it's for sweets or for salty things that is so odd I hate having to translate things Later on, you're going to have to cut your butter. You need 80 grams in more in little slices, and it needs to be at room temperature. So when you pour it into the mixture, not pour it, when you put it into the mixture, you're going to have butter that is really easy to squish within your hands. Like I'm starting out with a spoon, but I will <laughs> absolutely give up that method because it's not the right way to do it. You know, to do it with your hands like I'm doing here until it forms like sort of a sandy texture texture that you're going to recognize because the flour and the cocoa aren't really like soft and pleasant to the touch, but they taste they they, they taste they seem more like sand. Afterwards, you're going to after this texture is formed and the whole sort of dough looks like that you're going to add eggs and sugar and also nutmeg and sorry <laughs> nutmeg and uh, cinnamon you're I wish I could tell you you could use a whisk to do the job of <laughs> sugar and eggs and spices but sadly you do have to use your hands because it is the only way to get really everything incorporated and it's going to be very sticky and disgusting I know uh, but this is a good way to remind yourself to clean your hands it is a recipe that really needs a lot of hand cleaning while you do it which is really topical these days <laughs> as I'm sure most of you know we're all stuck at our, in our houses, which is why I'm baking so much. If you follow me on Twitter, you're going to see that I'm basically making bread every day. And this was like the alternative to not making bread yet again. So yes, you're going to want to mix your sugar and eggs. And <laughs> I'm, I'm really struggling to get like <laughs> the nutmeg <laughs> in the mixture over here because we are, do not have powdered nutmeg, no, no, we grate it in this house. You're going to, anyway, you're going to get the eggs and the spices in the mixture and then just, my book legit tells me, just get it, get in verbatim, get in, <laughs> into it with your hands. And oh my God, it's, it's either the best way of baking or the worst thing to do because it's so unpleasant to have to just stick your hands in there and have to work with the mixture until it forms something that is way more stiff and resembles a lot of more regular doughs that I'm going to show you in a little bit and here I'm just trying to clean my hand from this it's, it, again, again, it's a really sticky dough and it's going to be worth it to work it that much because you're going to have some nice results later, see, like this. After that, I think you should put it in the fridge for about 10 minutes so that it can firm up a little bit more and usually cookie dough, these aren't really cookies, but you know what, you, what I mean, cookie dough plays nicer when it's stiffer. And after that, it's been in the fridge for 10 minutes, you just get some baking sheets and start 
making your cookies. You just make some little balls, try to make them all uh, in the same dimension because when they bake, some are going to burn if they're smaller than others. And we don't want that, of course. And then you bake them in an oven at 180 degrees, which I don't know how much it is in Fahrenheit, I'm so sorry. You can probably Google that. <laughs> I'm really I'm sorry, but I, I generally have no idea. I think it's 300 Fahrenheit, but don't take my word too seriously. In uh, uh, at 180 degrees oven for around 10 to 15 minutes, but after the oven is has been preheated for a while, they might be done sooner. So just keep an eye on them, and when they seem ready, get them out of the oven, and that's pretty much it. I hope you had a nice time listening to me and that you try to make this as well.